Okay, so I told you there'd be a part two. Um, so this is the nine volt regulator that I worked on last week and um, upgraded the voltage regulator inside from an LM317 to an LM350 uh, to be able to source about twice the current from it. Um, and it still works just as before, the same uh, voltage steps um, through, you know, as, as you go up on the speed. And of course I replaced the connector with a red one just so I'd know which one was which. Um, Cause I also have a, this is an unmodified one except for um, I did install a temperature sensor on the regulator just like I did with this one. Um, so I'd be able to, to kind of compare and contrast them. Um, initially I did some tests with, with a nine volt train using two of the nine volt motors. And it did seem to, heat up a good bit faster. Um, I actually did a third version where I I just added a small heat sink to the existing heat sink just to have a little more thermal mass. Um, and just as I expected, it heat up just as much, but it just, it bought a few minutes. Um, you know, with a passive heat sink that's mounted inside of here where there's no airflow, you're just buying time if you have a steady load um, before it heats up to the same temperature that it would otherwise. So that got me thinking and I started work on a active cooling solution. So this is a <laughs> this is the somewhat final version I guess. Um, <laughs> it has an onboard RCX uh, which has the temperature sensor connected to and then you've got um, so it actually does um, give you a temperature readout here. It tends to jump up and down a little bit. That's just kind of the limitation of the RCX. Um, and then this output actually goes to a fan. So, and of course, I've got a Y connector here uh, that I made just for this to be able to power the RCX and the nine volt regulator from the same uh, connector. So I'll go ahead and remove that. Um, just so I don't burn burn through batteries too much because this is going to be on quite a bit, you know, the whole time this is on. This one uses a blue connector since this is the one that's going to run cooler. Uh, this is initially the one I, I just did a little upgrade to the heatsink in, inside of it. And um, again, it bought me a few minutes, but it didn't make a huge difference. So <laughs> this is the, the business end of the unit. Um, so I've got the temperature sensor here. This is the LM350. Um, this is a heat sink I uh, scavenged from somewhere. Um, I believe it was initially on like a low power CPU. Um, so I just kind of drilled a hole through and ran a screw through, mounted it on there. Uh, these wires, uh, well yeah, here's where I drilled through um, and the wires run through. And initially I had two wires coming out from the DC side of the diodes inside and that ran the fan. And it was just way too loud. Um, it was it's it's about 16 volts DC, um, even though you know the AC voltage coming in is a little less than that. That's just how it works. Once it's, it goes to the rectifier, it's going to be a little higher voltage. Um, and it was it was very loud. But man, this thing ran cool. Like it would just the temperature would go from you know in the ambient temperature of 76 or so. Uh, and these are all going to be Fahrenheit. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, it's just what I've been using this whole time. Um, up to about 80 degrees and it would just flatline there because it, it just, it was too good of a cooling solution <laughs> and, and loud. So I didn't like that. So this is the fan I'm using. This is a 12 volt fan. Um, you know, so again, 16 volts, it was very loud. Um, but now it's running off nine volts. Uh, it's this wire here that goes directly to the RCX. And um, I'll show you uh, a little bit later, you know, even when it's running, it's not very loud at all. It's probably going to be drowned out by whatever project I have going anyways. It's not going to be an issue. So for now, I have it set to turn on the fan when it hits about 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't very high. Um, but that's when it starts to get noticeably warm a little bit, maybe closer to 100. Um, you know, but once it gets up to 120, 130, it, it does feel very warm to the touch. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd just try to keep it cool. As quiet as the fan runs, um, I'm turning the fan on it at uh, 80. No, sorry. Turning the fan on at 90 degrees 
and turning the fan off at 80 degrees. Um, so I've got a good hit back. Hysteresis there, hysteresis. I, I hate that word. I've never been able to say it. Uh, and then so, and I've got a little lamp there that indicates when the fan is running or when it's not. And I will also point out any mention I do of the, <laughs> of the nine volt regulator at all. There's going to be a comment, somebody saying, "Why are you doing that? You use a, a switching mode power supply. Use a, a buck converter. Use this. Use that." Um, and they're right. It's, I'm not saying it's bad advice, but for me, this is part of it. This this little 9-volt regulator, this knob, the janky way it turns, this is the experience for me. You will have to pry this thing from my cold dead fingers. Along with several other old Lego 9-volt devices. And that's just the way it is. It's just, it's part of the experience to me. I like that it has studs on it and I can build on it. Um, I have a, a bench power supply. It's in the back of a lot of my videos right over there. Um, and I just recently uploaded a video to my personal channel, kind of reviving it. Um, so I'll link that video below if you want to see the internals and see how it's built. It's just a fun little simple uh, project. So after I did my initial train testing, uh, I started using just a bunch of motors. Um, I believe it was nine or 10 M size motors and four large. And I will point out they are not official Lego motors. These are the third party replacements you find all over the place, Amazon, eBay, AliExpress, wherever. So all of those motors together were, were giving me about a two amp load, uh, you know, sustained load on there. And, and that enabled me to do more testing. And I was using the DACTA Control Lab software and I was able to get a graph of the temperature readings, which is very cool. I, that's what I love so much that it's just so useful to be able to have that kind of stuff. So th this has been a very fun, rewarding project um, and that's why I uploaded it. Um, I may not use these very much, I'm not sure, but it's funny, the, you know, I'll do these projects just for fun and then my next project, I'll, I'll oh, I need a, a three amp <laughs> nine volt supply or, or whatever. It's just funny how that always works out where I end up using it for something. So these will be great to, to add to the arsenal. Um, you know, this red one, uh, I won't put a good sustained load on it, um, but it, it, these do very well with the servo motors, especially if you're trying to change the position of maybe three or more servo motors at a time, it can use a good bit of current and it's just a good spike. Um, and even these struggle a little bit. You can like, you know, I've, I always use these nine volt lamps to see a, a live indicator of the, how steady the nine volt supply is because a multimeter is only gonna update so fast. So that's a really good indicator of if your voltage is dropping out and how much. Um, uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this. If you want to know how the 9-volt regulators work, that actually is in, in my last video, which is a 40-minute video. I get that. Uh, I was kind of surprised looking at the analytics that most people actually got through that explanation. Um, so maybe they, they found that interesting. And then once it gets into the weeds and, and start soldering and all that, I, I guess that's where people clicked off, which is fine. I don't, I didn't expect that video to just go gangbusters at, at all. Um, if anything, I, maybe this video will get a few more views. It's a little more polished of a video, but I'd rather have the explanation and, and some of the experiences I've had so far with these. Because if you just do this upgrade, depending on what you're powering, you, you, you could have issues. It could really overheat because this thing gets very hot. I tried to hit the thermal limit for these and I never got there. Um, I was reading the temperature in Fahrenheit, but it was 248 degrees <laughs> inside of, uh, well, it was actually the, the unmodified, the, the yellow um, connector one with the LM317, and it still didn't shut off. And I think that's right around where it should have shut off, but it just never did. And really the, the temperature just kind of steadied out there. Um, and I was just like, okay, we're, we're, <laughs> we're playing with fire here. <laughs> uh, so I just shut it off and let it cool down. But this will be really nice moving forward. I'm actually really happy 
to have a, a, a good use case for these 9 volt um, series temperature sensors. I've never had a use for them before. Um, you know, they were used in classrooms. You'd like dip them in different temperature, water, and things like that. But this is a real world application. Um, it can be used with an RCX to control the a fan, something like that, or it can be plugged into the deck to control center and you can have graphs and, and all that. So that's been really fun as well. So all of these, they'll, they will be uh, showing up in videos from here on out. And it was a lot of fun to put them together. So I, I hope you guys in, enjoyed following along. And again, uh, feel free to leave comments, even if they are uh, going to tell me I'm doing it wrong. That's fine. <laughs> You're perfectly welcome to do that, um, but I will probably tell you, like, no, I like these. I, I, I want these. No one can tell you you're doing a hobby wrong unless you're actively hurting someone. <laughs> Otherwise, a hobby is for fun, so get out there and have fun. So thanks for watching. Remember to play well.